being a US service member, I decided, I said, you know, I don't know what it's gonna look like, but I'm gonna find a way and I'm gonna go and show my support for Israel. And when I show my support for something, I don't just like to do it on Facebook or Twitter or X or whatever it's called, Instagram or something else. I like to go out there and, and get my hands dirty, find a way to actually physically and tangibly get involved on this international day of rage that they called for, that the terrorists called for. I decided that I would break out my uniform and make it known exactly where it is that I stand and where I have stood before. Hey everybody, Congressman Brian Mast here. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, just giving you an update as we do every week on what's going on in Washington, D.C. This week, as you can see, I'm dressed maybe not in the normal suit and tie that you see me in. You might be wondering why am I wearing this uniform? Well, it's Friday night. You might be viewing this on a Saturday or a Sunday. And this Friday, what did Hamas call for? They called for an international day of rage. It wasn't enough that Hamas went out there and murdered, literally made the effort to go door to door in Israel to murder Israelis, Jews, Americans, uh, Europeans, Asians, anybody that was in that part of the country, systematically murder them, find ways to do that kidnap those individuals still being held hostage in this moment. It wasn't enough that they did all of that. They wanted an international day of rage where they bring that to a hometown near you. And, and I don't mean to say that in a, a snarky or sarcastic way. That's literally what their goal was to bring what they brought into Israel to a hometown near you. So how do I show my support? Well, a number of years ago, I showed my support for Israel in a, a similar but not nearly to the extent of what's going on right now situation. I was a student up at Harvard, and at that time, there were anti-Israel protests going on around the Harvard campus, people draping themselves in Palestinian flags. Uh, well, what was happening? Israel was defending themselves yet again from the barrage of thousands of rockets being rained into their country. And at that time, some of their service members being taken hostage. I decided at that time because of the hypocrisy that I was seeing in and around the Harvard campus uh, of these people that, that if America was being attacked by Canada or Mexico or some Caribbean country or something like that, guys like me would be sent to go kill those people and every American would be proud of us for doing I couldn't take the hypocrisy that was going on. I decided one night that, that my wife and I basically had this come to the, the forefront of us where we were uh, in some way accosted by people that were out there protesting this. Um, you know, me being a U.S. service member, I decided, I said, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I'm going to find a way and I'm going to go and show my support for Israel. And when I show my support for something, I don't just like to do it on Facebook or Twitter or X or whatever it's called, Instagram or something else. I like to go out there and, and get my hands dirty, find a way to actually physically and tangibly get involved. And I went and I volunteered with Israel. This was the, the uniform that I earned and, and the things that I received from, from friends and service members across the country that I'm friends with to this day. And that's how I showed my support at the time. And today, being in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., on this international day of rage that they called for, that the terrorists called for, I decided that I would break out my uniform and make it known exactly where it is that I stand and where I have stood before. The fight that's going on in Israel is not just a fight for Israel. There were Americans killed and there are American hostages. And I've said it numerous times, there should be every expectation that if Americans are killed, there are Americans that seek retribution. If there are Americans that are held hostage, there should be every effort made by American service members, American operators, to go and rescue those Americans. That is in the works as we speak. There is the Ford Carrier Battle Group. There are aircraft carrier destroyers, other things in the Mediterranean that are there supporting the operations. People that have been watching the news, you understand the sheer number of hostages that exist there. It precipitates the need for there being hostage rescue teams from Israel, from America, probably from other countries as well. When you uh, think about the enormous scope of what is taking place every single day with these hostages, the way that they are being held captive, moved across the tunnel system or to different buildings or possibly even into different countries across the region in the same way that Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Aqsa, Martyr 
Martyrs Brigade, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, these other terrorist groups move rockets and ordnance and other things into Israel. That is the situation that is taking place for these hostages facing the threat of murder each and every moment, torture each and every moment, and being moved to, to who knows where. Many people saw the images of those that were literally killed by, by gunfire and fighters and decapitation. But let's not forget about the thousands of rockets that were literally lobbed into Israel with the intent of indiscriminately killing any civilian that, that they could kill. That is their resolve as the terrorists. We have to stand against that. Whether it's 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000 bodies, I will stand with them to get the job done until the job is done to root out that evil. Let's talk about something else that's gone on in Washington, D.C. this week, the speaker's race, right? So to give an idea of what's taken place with the speaker's race, try to explain some of the things that take place. Look, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy, there was offered a motion to vacate, which means remove the Speaker of the House of Representatives. I did not vote for that motion to vacate. I thought it was a mistake to do that motion to vacate. And if you wonder why things take so long to do this, it's because of the specific parliamentary rules that take place in order to select another speaker. So behind closed doors, what takes place with this is number one, individuals put their names forward saying, listen, I raised my hand. I would like to be considered to be speaker of the House of Representatives as part of the majority party. After those individuals raise their hand, there is then a candidate forum for those individuals to talk about their ideas, have questions asked of them by individuals like myself, uh, hear other people ask questions and their answers to those things, and then ultimately there is a vote behind closed doors, the individual that gets the uh, at least half of the vote uh, of the majority of the conference has then the opportunity to decide when they want to go to the floor of the House of Representatives to be voted on on the floor. Uh, Steve Scalise was chosen a day ago uh, after some of the things that happened where he figured out he just simply, even though the rules said people would go vote for him on the floor afterwards, the fact was, he didn't have the votes to, to move to the floor of the House of Representatives and get 218 votes on the floor of the House of Representatives, so he decided to withdraw his name, no longer be considered for Speaker of the House of Representatives. So again today, we had another opportunity for individuals to raise their hand, say they wish to be Speaker of the House, have another candidate forum, have another vote series. That went on between Representative Austin Scott of Georgia, Representative Jim Jordan uh, of Ohio. Jim Jordan became the Speaker elect out of that. And now there's still a situation where, while there are more people that support him, there are still not 218 people that say they will literally vote for him on the floor of the House of Representatives, which is what many of you saw play out in January of this year with Speaker Kevin McCarthy. There are a number of Republican members of Congress that have essentially left town throughout the week. They went back to different places where they were from. So they were not even in Washington to vote for the speaker elect or to be here to vote on the floor of the house. Those individuals have the opportunity to now come back. Speaker elect Jordan has the opportunity to speak to those people that are dissenting and don't want to vote for him on the floor of the house and hopefully figure out what has to happen to get that floor that vote across the the floor of the the house of representatives that's what's taking place right now i wish i could give you more of an update on the timeline of everything and and, and when everything is going to happen uh, but i can tell you that i'm here for every bit of it and uh, as always if you have questions on things anything. Um, never hesitate to reach out uh, to our office, ask your questions, make your comments, make yourself known, and uh, we always look forward to hearing from you. As always, it is an honor to be able to represent you. I wish you all the best. I look forward to seeing you all around. You all take care. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. I will be back on YouTube with more exclusive content, so stay tuned.